did the Earth begin? Well, the Earth, you know, is part of the Milky Way galaxy, and like all star systems, we began as a nebula over five billion years ago. And that nebula began to coalesce and formed our solar system. Now, interestingly, we are a third or fourth generation star. There's been lots of stars before us. And from those other ancient stars that lived and died before our solar system was even formed, they created all the heavy elements needed to form a rocky planet. So, the Earth formed. The solar system formed about 4.6 billion years ago. And we use radiometric dating to determine the age of the Earth. And interestingly, whenever we age meteorites that have fallen to the Earth, they give us a similar age. So the very first eon was the Hadean eon from 4.6 to 4 billion years ago. Yeah, does that look familiar to Star Wars fans out there? Does that look something like the Mustafar system? I've always thought that Star Wars is visiting our solar system and our planet in different time periods. Yeah, so maybe the ancient Earth was home to ancient Jedi battles between good and evil. They were tragic. Speaking of a bad day on the planet, sometime shortly after the Earth formed, about 4.5 billion years ago, there was the Thea impact. This was enormous. Another developing planet about the size of Mars slammed into the Earth. Luckily, it didn't hit it straight on. If it did, it probably would have just obliterated both of us, but it was a glancing blow. And uh, that ripped off enough of the crust and the mantle that it formed our moon. So our moon came from this the impact. And in fact, uh, recent studies of our mantle and our core are showing the remnants of the Thea impact from four and a half billion years ago. Now, the Hadean Eon, oh, named after the god of the underworld, Hades, right? Because this was kind of like hell on Earth. There were lots of meteor impacts, and the surface was often molten, especially in the beginning. So this was a, a pretty rough place to be. And interestingly, um, the moon, when it formed, was much closer to the Earth. It's like a quarter million miles away now, but back then, it was much closer. It would have dominated the night sky. And um, it would have been glowing orange from all the lava flows, at least the surface of it. Now, during the Hadean that lasted about 600 million years, the Earth's surface began to cool. And as it cooled, we started to get the first oceans. And there's a lot of people trying to study where we got all of our water from. So, here's the Hadean, formation of the Earth, formation of the Moon, and it ended this heavy bombardment of all of these meteors hitting the Earth. Now, some scientists have found evidence that life may have actually gotten started near the end of the Hadean 4.0 to 4.1 billion years ago. Not everybody agrees. Me, I personally think that life probably started very early on this planet over 4 billion years ago. So at the end of this heavy bombardment, when like our solar system got cleared out of a lot of the debris left over from our origins, we begin the Archean Eon. And this lasted for 1.5 billion years, right? So it lasted a long time. And our continents formed. So what happened here is that the lighter rock that was mixed in our planet, right? Mixed in the mantle, mixed in the core. That lighter rock moved to the surface and the heavier rock sank. That's why we have a core made up of iron, which is good. Acts as a giant magneto and uh, spins up. It's slowly spinning, creating a magnetic field protecting us. So, yay. But our continents began to form. Now, they did not look anything like they do today. And in fact, because the Earth is such a dynamic planet, we don't know what those first continents look like. We just know they existed. And there are actually remnants of those first continents embedded in like parts of our modern continents like Australia 
and up in like Greenland and parts of Canada, which have some of the oldest rocks on the surface. We know that oceans are present and they were probably quite a, because when we do find ancient rocks, there's also evidence that they were underwater. So we know that by the Archean, there were the, or the surface was cooling. We're getting our continents. We also have an atmosphere. Now, interestingly, if I dropped you off in the Archean, you'd be really mad at me if I didn't give you some oxygen to breathe. The Archean atmosphere didn't have any free oxygen. It was full of nitrogen, carbon dioxide, and water vapor. And there might have been some ammonia and methane as well. And this is important because those high levels of water vapor and carbon dioxide and methane helped to blanket the planet and keep it warm. Our sun was actually not as warm as it was today. It was like 75% of its current brightness. So that thick atmosphere probably kept the earth nice and warm. We also know for a fact that life at least was going during the Archean. It either started at the end of the Hadean or got started at the beginning of the Archean. And we know that life was started because we see fossil evidence of this. And the origins of life from non-life is called abiogenesis. A means without, bio means life. Genesis will start, right? Not just a cool 80s rock band. <laughs> Sorry. But uh, so origins of life from non-living, that's abiogenesis. And we think they got started in these alkaline vents. So how do we know? We see the fossil evidence. There are these structures called stromatolites. And stromatolites have been positively dated from about 3.8 to 3.7 billion years ago. These are bacterial colonies. So that means that life had to have gotten started before those stromatolites were, made, were forming because that's already an evolutionary adaptation. How cool is that? And believe it or not, stromatolites are still around today. And this is a picture from Shark Bay, Australia. No, I, I have not taken that photo. I would love to go there and take that photo of those stromatolites. One of the first key evolutionary innovations for life was the ability to replicate its DNA. This is crucial, right? Because if life never evolved the ability to store genetic information and replicate it, then life would probably be nothing more than a metabolically active rock. That metabolically active rock, what in the world do I mean by that? Imagine those vents where water is moving through them and they have tiny reaction chambers like the rocks are kind of like Swiss cheese and all the different holes are little reaction chambers that are building up organic molecules. So metabolism is chemical reactions, right? So these little chambers might have had chemical reactions going on, building up and concentrating organic molecules needed for life. At some point, these metabolic reaction chambers acquired cell membranes, DNA, RNA, and the ability to replicate. And this was probably one of the most important evolutionary innovations for all life. Because even NASA defines a living, defines life as basically storing information and copying that information. So it's self-sustaining, right? And because whenever you copy information, you sometimes have mistakes called a mutation. And well, we've seen evolution. Natural selection acts on variation in a population, and that variation comes from mutations. So this allowed life to leave the confines of these rocks and start to replicate, expand, and evolve. So, and life, as we know, has continually been evolving. And because all life came from an ancestral population of cells sometime 3.8, 4.0 billion years ago, Guess what? That means that you represent an unbroken lineage going all the way back to the very first life on this planet. So, I mean, think about that. Your great, 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 great. Let's add in a few billion greats. Grandparents are bacteria. Mine too. It's pretty awesome. Life evolves. What's a great resource of energy? The sun, right? 
And what do plants need for photosynthesis? They need carbon dioxide, water, a few minerals, and sunlight. And our planet, back about 3 billion years ago or longer or further back than that, was full of those three things. Lots of sunlight, lots of water, lots of carbon dioxide. Now, plants did not evolve photosynthesis. They wouldn't show up for another, gosh, probably 3 billion years after the origins of photosynthesis. Wasn't plants, it was cyanobacteria. It was cyanobacteria. Bacteria did it, right? And we call it oxygenic photosynthesis because what happens is as the cyanobacteria are doing photosynthesis, they're actually using the energy in sunlight to split water. So they release oxygen as a byproduct. But photosynthesis is probably one of the key evolutionary innovations of life. One of the most important ones coming right after the evolution of the ability to replicate your DNA, because I mean, that ensures the continuity of life, right? Now, photosynthesis, this is providing more nutrients and more energy to our planet, right? Rather than relying on uh, organic molecules made naturally in the, on the planet or thermal vents for energy, now, the li now life can harness an abundant source of energy. So that's pretty cool, right? You've got a lot more energy and nutrients now available to ecosystems. So now we can have a lot more living things to exist. But oxygen, this byproduct of photosynthesis, you know, at first it wasn't very good for life. Oxygen is incredibly reactive, right? It likes to oxidize things. So it damaged the first life. So life evolved the ability eventually to utilize oxygen and it energize life. So that's important. So we're having more nutrients, more energy, and the ability to use that energy to store it much more efficiently. That's not it. You know, we're surrounded way high up by an ozone layer. Ozone is O3 and it filters out ultraviolet light. Now, ultraviolet light has a lot of energy. It can actually break apart water molecules. It can damage light because it it damages our, our proteins, our membranes, and our DNA. Without the ozone layer, life would not be able to exist very well on the surface of the planet. And in fact, some have even speculated that if we never formed an ozone layer, that eventually the Earth may have lost our oceans because uh, you would split water. The Earth is not big enough to hold on to hydrogen gas. We don't have enough gravity. It's too light. We just escape into space. The oxygen, was, the oxygen would stick around, oxidize whatever rocks are around, and that's it. We would end up looking kind of like Mars. So, yeah, as you can see, photosynthesis is pretty important. So all of that happened in the Archean, right? We clearly had the origins of life, DNA replication, and oxygenic photosynthesis. Of course, I call it oxygenic photosynthesis because we think the very first photosynthetic organisms used hydrogen sulfide rather than water, H2S versus H2O. And of course that just leaves sulfur behind. And also important for terrestrial life, the continents began to form of, from granite, but nothing lived on those continents that we know of. Maybe some bacteria, but definitely no plants or animals.